Welcome to World in Two Minutes. These are your headlines. The Electoral Commission in Burundi has started counting the ballots cast in the country's controversial presidential vote. The incumbent president Pierre Nkurunziza is widely expected to win a third term in office. Opposition groups have denounced his candidacy as unconstitutional because they say it violates the nation's two-term limit. But the Constitutional Court ruled he could stand for election again because he had been appointed to his first term instead of by a popular vote. Pre-election protests in Burundi have killed at least 100 people. A mass funeral has been held for 27 of the 32 people killed in a bomb attack in the town of Suruj near Turkey's border with Syria. Most of the victims belonged to the Federation of Socialist Youth Associations known as the SGDF. The suspected suicide bombing on Monday happened at a news conference at a cultural centre. The SGDF had been planning to travel to Syria to help rebuild the town of Kobani. The Turkish Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu says the suspected bomber has been identified. Investigators say they suspect ISIS but the group hasn't claimed responsibility. The Pentagon has announced that a US airstrike has killed an Al-Qaeda leader. It says Mohsin Al-Fadli was traveling in a vehicle in northern western Syria on July 8th when it was hit. The Pentagon says Fadli was involved in several operations including one in 2002 against the US Marines on Filaka Island in Kuwait and another against the French ship MV Limburg. The Pentagon also says Fadli was one of the few members of Al-Qaeda who had prior knowledge of the 9-11 attacks. Apple has reported record results for its third quarter. Profits rose 38% from a year ago to $10.7 billion. iPhone sales were up 35%. The company's CEO Tim Cook described the results as an amazing quarter. But Apple's stock price fell because of the poor outlook for the fourth quarter. Thanks for watching TRTWorld.com Istanbul.